Hey guys, welcome back to channel Chico Fanny Lungu back with another reaction video. If you're new, welcome. If you're not, welcome back. Uh, thank you for 21,000 subscribers. Please keep subscribing, liking, commenting, sharing, and supporting our content. If there's anything you guys would love me to react to, just give me the name or the link down below, and I'll be more than glad to react to whatever you suggest. And I really hope you guys are doing alright. Um, find us on Facebook and Instagram. We go by Fanny and Jesse. Head there, say hi, and we'll say hi back. Check out our second YouTube channel called Fanny and Jesse 2.0. Head there, subscribe, and enjoy the content that we put out. So today, I'm going to be reacting to the greatest miracle of Prophet Muhammad. So without wasting time, let's get into the video. Amen. Jesus said, "The Lord our God is one, is one Lord." And you shall love the Lord with your God with all your heart. Mark 12th chapter, the 29th through the 30th verse. Muslims agree with Christians that there is only one God. But how do Muslims love God without a change of heart? The change of heart, look at the Muslims. Look at that. Jesus said, by the fruits you shall know them. Do men get a fix from the thistle or grapes from the thorn? He said, every good tree will be a good fruit and every evil tree will be evil fruit. Here is the test. The fruits. Islam has created the biggest society of teetotalers in the world. There are some 1,000 million Muslims in the world and almost as a whole, they are teetotalers. They don't imbibe alcohol. Here is the fruit. My own particular race, the most racist people on earth, you know, the Hindus of India, the, 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 the caste Hindus, you know, the, uh, the, the super Brahmin caste, my nation. And you see the same nation, the most racist nation on earth becomes one who accepts the black and the white, the rich and the poor in his brotherhood. A change. With all these claims that are being made for Christianity, Jesus Christ transforming people's lives, you know, the, the old you goes out of you and the new you comes into you. I said, my dear brothers and sisters, look, in this mighty nation of America, according to Brother Swaggart, 11 million drunkards. That's what he says. 11 million drunkards and 44 million heavy drinkers. Your nation. And Brother Swaggart says, I see no difference between them means 55 million. He considers them to be drunkards. The only difference is that he's not going far enough. In Islam, we say even your social drinker. The Holy Quran says, but before that the Prophet Muhammad said, so whatever intoxicates in greater quantity is forbidden even in smaller quantity. No excuse for a nip or a tot. Out. The Holy Quran says, Ya Yuhallazina Amanu, so all you who believe, in Namal Khamru, most certainly intoxicants, while Maisir and gambling. Brother Sargat in his book on gambling says, 54 billion a year you are squandering on gambling. Well, Maisiru, well, Ansabu and fortune telling, well, Aslamu and idol worship, Rizum bin Amal Shaitan, are an abomination of Satan's handiwork, Fajtani Buhul Allah Kum Tuflihun. It's a shun such abomination that you may prosper. And wine barrels were emptied in the streets of Medina, never to be refilled. This is the fruit. This is the fruit of this teaching. With 2,000 years of preaching, look at it. You have these powers of miracle working. Christ gives life. He heals the sick. Muhammad couldn't. In the name of Muhammad, they couldn't do it. I says, my brothers, you don't read the scriptures. Jesus Christ, he said, for there shall arise many false Christs and false prophets who will show you great signs and wonders if it were possible to deceive the very elect. If false Christ can do that, if false Christ can perform miracles, if false prophets can perform miracles, then I says, is this a test of your faith? Then Jesus Christ tells those who are doing this miraculous work. He's telling you in the Gospel of St. Matthew that on that day, on the last day, on the day of judgment, he says, many will come to me on that day saying, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in thy name and in thy name cast out devils and in thy name do many mighty works? In your name, in the name of Jesus, didn't you do all these things? Didn't we do all that? He said, yes. He said, then I will profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. 
I said, yeah, explain. You, he won't tell the Jews, depart from me, for sack, get away, I don't know you. He won't tell the Hindus, get away from me, or the atheists, get away from me. He will tell you. I want to know why. Why would he tell you? I don't even know you, get out. I says, look, these are not the test. John the Baptist, according to Jesus, one of the mightiest messengers of God. Jesus says, among those born of women, there has not risen another greater than John the Baptist. And yet he performed no miracles. Did he? Show me, what did he do? What miracles? No, miracle is not a test. But the greater miracle is that without any miracles, you transform nations. Nations are transformed. 1,000 million people, they don't imbibe alcohol because of the dictates of Muhammad. The guy actually asked a very, very important question. Um, when it comes to the change of mind, I feel like change of mind has to depend on the situation. Sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad, but where it's bad, I don't think you should, you should even consider that, that change of mind and relate it to God. That change of mind and say God will understand or something. If you find that in a situation of uh, drinking alcohol or smoking or whatever it is, you know, if you tell, if you know that health-wise, guys, this is not healthy. I don't think today we should sit down and condone drinking and say, but we've had a change of mind. So God will be understanding enough to understand that what well, a group of evolving people, you know, it, I don't, I don't think that would be right. We don't have to have a change of mind. To fit in with the rest and hope to be accepted and say because God loves us or because we love God so let's have a change of mind to fit in with the rest of the world no if those strict rules are going to spare us uh, from the from falling down going to spare us from landing into traps going to spare us from all the evils of this, of this world then I don't think a change of mind would be necessary um, let's not be accepting of anything that's thrown at us. Okay, someone is saying we should all use pink books like mine. It doesn't have to be like that. We don't have to agree with all of us using pink books. God created us in a way that we all have different minds. We all are from different cultures. We all are from just different places of the world, different times, different whatever it is. So our ethics, our morals are going to differ at some point. All our parents' morals differ from us. Let them do what they have to do. If they've passed on those things to us, let us do what we have to do. We don't always have to change things to fit in, to change things, to uh, be accepted in this. If something is strict and it's good for us, I think that's all right with me. If something is um, not strict and constantly changing, we're going to have some level of confusion to some extent, and we should be able to uh, question ourselves as to why it's constantly um, changing or evolving or whatever you want to call it, and see where we go from there. Otherwise, um, like I said, a change of mind really, really depends. And... It has to depend on necessity, really, according to me. But if you guys have a different opinion, your opinion is always welcome. Feel free to comment down below. If there's anything you want me to react to, let me know down below. Make sure to give me the name or the link. Just comment it below and I'll be more than glad to check it out. Make sure to give uh, this video a thumbs up. Share it with your friends and of course do not forget to subscribe. And I'll see you in my next reaction video.